Okay. Welcome to Into the Channel podcast, primarily about women's football. Before we hit the pitch, if you enjoy the show or love women's football as much as your boys do, come kick it with us already. Subscribe, follow YouTube, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, wherever you like to watch or listen. Leave us a review over your favorite podcast app. Links to all of our socials in the show notes of this episode. I am your host, Dino DeCespedes, and as always, I am joined by my co-host, Mr. Grant Angle. What is up, man? I'm feeling fantastic, buddy. Mm. I'm going to crack the beer early. Ooh, I like it. I like it. I, I like you it. got one. We have groups. We have match days. Mm. We have the pivot matches to look forward to. That's good. That cool. sounds fantastic. Cheers. The UWCL. Cheers to you. Cheers to the UEFA Women's Champions League. It is a celebration of life. It's very much back. I think it's back, back. Mm-hmm. I mean, we, we could quibble about whether it's back, back today or it's back, back on the 8th. Yeah. Who's to say? Who really cares? The football's coming. It's almost here. We're going to be ready for it. So now that we have our match schedule, we know what the eight matches are going to be. We got Tuesday action. We've got Wednesday action. I want to get into it. I want to kind of loosely break down uh, from a very, very early, early perspective, try to figure out how we're feeling about these matches. For the most part, I just kind of want to get hyped up with you. With that said, where do you want to get started? Let's start in alphabetical order. You and I, we're both men of letters, Mm. if you will. Uh, So let's do this. The right way. Let's start with Group A. For anybody who was viewing this fine program during the last Women's Champions League tournament, Dino and I kind of assigned ourselves two groups each, and it broke out the same way. Dino's going to take A and C. I'm going to take B and D. So Dino, please lead the way with Group A. Let's go. Um, And for anybody who was listening last season, apologies for the poor audio. We've uh, hopefully fixed that since then. So it shout out. <laughs> Shout out to sticking around. I do also want to make a quick note. You know, before we get rolling here, I want to give a little hat tip to the nine squads that didn't make it back. Mm. But squads that I think we we developed some feelings for. SK Braun, Rosengard, Eintracht Frankfurt, Slavia Praha, Ajax Benfica, BK Hacken, Paris FC, and last year's semifinalist, PSG. All psh, out of here. Nine out, nine in. The competition, I think, raised up a level. Very excited about that. Mm. And let's jump right in. Group A, first matchup, Tuesday, 12.45 p.m. Eastern. Finalist in last year's UEFA Women's Champions League tournament, Olympic Lyonnais hosting Galatasaray. Very excited about this one. Great, great, great way to start this group stage. I want to kick it to you real quick. Anything that you're going to be looking for in this one? Or I don't know, Lyon's back. Galatasaray, they're, they're, they're a little bit of a newcomer. Where's the first place that your head goes with this one? I think it's got to be Cascarino out, mm. Chewinga in. I mean, I'm not exactly breaking news here. It's a massive move. We talked about it with our great pal, Asil Tufaili, who writes for Forbes. Read all of her work immediately, please. You lose Cascarino to San Diego. Diani is going to play naturally on the right. Chewinga is more of a natural fit on the left. Cascarino, you know, is more of a right wing herself. So now what happens? Is this, how turnkey is this going to be with Dumornay in the center, Diani on the right, Chewinga on the left? It's almost like they took the the PSG format Mm -hmm. of having Chewinga, Katoto, and Baltimore, and they just like juiced that up a little bit, Lyon style. And I just am very excited to see how this is going to look. That's a great call. I had the exact same thought while watching them. So they're two matches in to their D1F season, 12 goals for, just two allowed. I think that trio, Chewinga, Dumornay, well, let's just start with those two. Tab of the Chewinga, Melchi Dumornay. Yep. The physicality, like the physical yep. tools of those two players, absolutely overwhelming. Mm-hmm. Like there's just no real game plan. There's no... There's nothing you can do in training <laughs> to properly prepare for those two yeah. players. And then you have Diani on the right, who you mentioned. Ton of gravity, ton of craft, couple goals that she scored already. Just ridiculous. I mean, she had one that looked like a perfect pitching wedge strike from 20, 21 yards out, perfectly placed. And that's just straight craft. Like, she's just such a great player to pair with them. And then Tabitha Chewinga, she got on the score sheet. Melchi Dumornay, I think I'll take some responsibility here with, uh, with Melchi. I think I was a little tough on her last year because i think she Mm. makes her comeback in the knockout stage against the absolute creme de la creme competition coming in against barcelona in the final and we're like oh well what's what's up with duarnay it's like well you know tough matchup right you know so (laughs) but this season i mean 
she's already scored three different kind of ways. Like one, she kind of muscled in. She had a nasty turn and fire off of Lindsay Horan assist. Lindsay Horan, too, I want to give her a quick shout out. Already four goals in the season. She's playing super aggressively. Her decision making is lightning quick. I think she's going to be the player for Lyon who maybe benefits the most by these Ooh, yeah. new additions because they're so fast and they're so creative. And like Lindsay mentally can keep up. The brain power, the processing power is fast enough, is strong enough that I think she's going to be able to really cash in. And we're already starting to see that. That's a great call. I think we could probably expect to see Iran and Vandedunk mm-hmm. really kind of capitalize on that play balls into into the area, but then also be hanging around when those three forwards are really kind of taking a, a bunch of attention. And you already know what time it is with Vandedunk and Haran. They can hit shots from outside the 18 just as well. And I think, you know, Haran, she cashed in a penalty versus Fleury. But maybe it's talked about. I don't know if, if you've heard it. Haran, it feels like one of the calmest and smoothest penalty takers in the world. We've seen her do it for USA, but the fact that she is the one who takes them for Leon, I think is super impressive in itself. There's no game that's going to feel too big for her. (laughs) So it's like, just start there. I mean, she's incredibly skilled, uh, incredibly composed. Goals we talked about this season already for Haran. Assists we've already talked about this season for Haran. And I'm just excited to see what Leon's ceiling is this season. Obviously, another departure that I think worth mentioning, Sonia Bonpastor. Of course. We'll see see what happens there. I think defensively, Leon, hmm. Hasn't looked all the way, you know, locked in. Let's say they gave up two to Flurry, both, I think, in the first minute of the first half, first minute of the second half mm-hmm. to Evelina Kamchik. Let's switch gears, though. Galatasaray, mm-hmm. tall order going to Lyon to take on this team. But I don't know, man. I think they're going to, I think they're going to muck it up. I think they're going to make it interesting. This is, this doesn't feel like the same Slavia Praha, Zeng Polten kind of matchup where it's like, all right, this is a, a, really just a tune up. It, it might end up being, and I might look like an idiot, but I don't know. Something about this Galatasaray side, they just play extremely tough. They're just not going to roll over and they can threaten. You know, they're not going to be threatening all 90 minutes, but they will threaten. Yeah. I mean, they, they're going to have to come in there and play underdog football. Uh, I believe they are the first Turkish team to make the Women's Champions League, uh, definitely in this format, they're the first uh, Turkish squad. They're probably the most legendary, uh, and please, pals of the show, correct me if I'm wrong, but just from what I know about men's football, I think they're the most famous Turkish club. I think they won the UEFA Cup in like 2000. I think it was in high school when they won it. They've had some legendary players. Uh, Suker was a great striker for them on the men's side. I digress. But basically what I'm saying is that we talked about it. Like when Real Madrid established their women's team or like Bayern Munich and you have these teams that they come in and they have a natural pedigree. We talked about it a lot with Benfica as they're kind of on their journey. This is step one for Galatasaray. Step one in terms of big steps. There have been many, many other steps behind the scenes that I don't want to diminish on on their way here, Mm -hmm. but they're going to have to play underdog football. They're going to have to play a low block. They're going to have to try to muck up the game and be tough. Yep. And from what we saw in the qualifying phase, they're definitely going to try to play physical. I know they have one of our favorite Colombian players, Catalina Usme. She's not going to shy away from playing physical. We know that. It's going to be very interesting to see how they hold up in this first one versus Leon. Absolutely. And I think what I'm excited about this Galatasaray side, oh, I guess what excites me the most is I'm not going to, you know, put too much stock into just this. Obviously, this is the toughest match in in the entire group stage, right? Going to Leon. And I really like the, you know, hey, let's think about this as the journey of this squad. Even having to get past Slavia Praha, a group stage team from last year, 2-2, now you need a result going to Prague, like, and they got it done there. I don't know, it's just exciting. I think we're we're starting to see a team maybe kind of bubbling up here. I'm not sure exactly how they're going to look in this first match, but I think they're going to play at least a, a few very tough group A matches and really push some teams here. So I'm very excited about that. Let's shift gears the second Group A matchup, another tasty one, going down at the same time, Tuesday, 12.45 p.m. Eastern, Roma hosting Wolfsburg. And so it begins, the Wolfsburg Revenge Tour. Mm. Uh, I don't want to count out Roma, but we've talked about them a lot. Wolfsburg, they have the pedigree, two-time winners of this tournament, four-time runner-ups in this tournament. They've won Frown Bundesliga seven times. Alexandra Pop, Lyneth Bierenstein, Eula Brand. They dominated Fiorentina. Fiorentina was never in either match from the first whistle, probably from getting off the bus. And no disrespect to Fiorentina, (laughs) who have good players themselves. That was an illustration of where both of these clubs kind of are in their footballing journey as clubs right now. So Fiorentina, Mm -hmm. I look forward to seeing them back. But I think Wolfsburg is here thinking anything less than the quarterfinals 
would probably be a failure for them. And they played like it in qualifiers. They're getting back on track in Frauen Bundesliga. I think they're looking awfully tough right now. I'm glad you took it there. I'm not sure you saw the result today from Frauen Bundesliga when they went to Eintracht Frankfurt. Mm. So this one went down this morning. <laughs> Eintracht Frankfurt 3, Wolfsburg nil. Oh, they wow. got worked. <laughs> so it's really interesting. Wow. Nicola Nyomi, she put in a strike early, had the keeper beaten for sure. Uh, Marina Hegering, she's on the line. Incredible stop from Hegering. And then what's interesting is like, I think like 15, 20 minutes later, and Yomi gets revenge on Hegering, <laughs> strikes a ball, hits Hegering in the hand, earns a penalty. <laughs> so Sarah Dorsoon knocks that one in to make it 1-0 Frankfurt. Then Frygang to Yomi for the second, smashed it, side deading, just nasty. And then a give and go between Geraldine Reutler and Nicole Anyomi to make it 3-0. So Anyomi almost had a hat trick. She didn't get to stick the penalty, but she earned it. Yeah. So it's kind of, we need a name for that. When you get two and then you earn a penalty. I don't know if there, if there is, please YouTube comments here. I know what time it is. Let us know. Yeah. But that result kind of had me thinking because obviously they mushed Fiorentina. Like one close over before it started. Yeah. So it's like, is this a, Let's over-index on the Champions League and let's kind of like maybe slow roll for Bundesliga. I wasn't really sure what to make of it. One last note on the match from this uh, this morning, Lyneth Berenstein drew a bunch of early fouls. So I wasn't sure if that was Frankfurt's game plan. They're like, hey, let's just, we don't care if we rack up a couple of yellows here. Let's make them feel us. Let's make it tough on them. L- let's make it a, a nasty kind of gritty type game. Yeah. Uh, but shout out to Eintracht Frankfurt. Smashed them. That's good to know. See, I'm too focused on uh, the NWSL over here. I, I totally <laughs> missed what was uh, what was going down today over in Frauen Bundesliga. We know what it is with Eintracht Frankfurt. They have a lot of good players. They're a well-organized team. They put in a, a valiant effort in last year's Champions League. Now Frankfurt sitting second in the table, and Wolfsburg's sitting in fifth, three points uh, behind Leverkusen and Frankfurt looking at those Champions League spots. Now, luckily, they've only played four matches in the season. So it's very, very young. But yeah, they're going to be one of the most interesting squads throughout this entire tournament. Absolutely. I mean, I uh, penciled them in to the knockout stage already. And now I'm just kind of like, oh, maybe could they be vulnerable here? They got Roma. They got to go to Roma and open things up. We'll see. Speaking of, uh, Associazione Sportiva de Roma. Mm Mm-hmm. They opened the group stage at home against the aforementioned Wolfsburg side. Another big win today for Roma, 3-1 to one over Napoli. That gives them four straight wins, 16 goals in those four after opening the season with two draws. So I think they're they're starting to get it cooking and leaning heavy, heavy, heavy on their big three, Evelyn Vienne, Manuela Giuliano, and Valentina Giacinti. Today, Giuliano gets two, Evelyn Vienne, Terminator, she gets one. So, I mean, this team, this Roma team, they know who they are. From an attacking standpoint, I think their confidence is only growing with each match. I think last season, obviously, they won Serie A Femenil. In the Champions League, they were kind of spunky. They were dangerous. Got some results where we weren't necessarily expecting them. I think this season's going to be a little bit of a different flavor. I think they're coming in feeling like, you know, our three, we feel pretty good about, you know, lining up with pretty much any three, barring maybe a couple of those very top, top, top teams. So Roma's not going to feel like they're out of any game, and they're going to get a great test against Wolfsburg. I don't think Roma's extremely tough at home necessarily, not the not the scariest place to play. I know that they've, they've dropped some results at home. Hmm. But I don't know, Wolfsburg coming off a legit thumping, going to Roma. I don't know. I'm kind of, I'm excited for this one. Matchup-wise, anything you're going to be looking for specifically? So Giuliano and Vienne each have three goals apiece in this young Serie A Femenile season. I'm going to be real interested to see. You got the veteran. You got one of the smartest players on the field at all times, Saki Kumagai mm-hmm. for Roma. Uh, her center back partner, Minami they're going to have a hell of a time trying to play physical with Lyneth Bierenstein. And then you still have Alexandra Pop and, and Eula Brand floating around out there. I think the key to these two matches is going to be, can Roma absorb that pressure and then try to get it out to the trio of Giuliano, Vienne, and Giacinti and try to really make the most out of their chances in those counter situations? Absolutely. And I think a um, couple of their players for Roma have stood out for sure already early in the season. I, th- I know uh, Giulia Dragoni, she put a nasty strike on the bar that was just inches from from hitting. I think Kumagai and Minami have both scored this season. You can kind of check me on that. So I think it's more than just the three-headed monster. I think this team is playing a more cohesive brand of attacking football. I can see this one kind of going going either way. And, and the result from this morning kind of scared me a bit. If I had to make a pick here, which I don't, but um, I kind of I kind of would lean 
eh, slight lean to Roma in this one, which oh, I think wow. <laughs> surprised me uh, okay. you know, based on kind of where I was at. I don't know. We'll see. I could be wrong. All right. Hey, you know what, buddy? The possibility of being wrong has never stopped me from making all kinds of predictions <laughs> on this podcast. So, you know, I don't, I like where your head's at. I think I am stationed firmly on the Wolfsburg bandwagon. Mm. I think when these European fixtures happen, I think they are going to be as locked in as any other team in the competition. I think they're going to lean on that history. They're going to lean on that pedigree. And I'll go one more. I'm going to go. I'm going to go completely opposite of you. For anybody who accuses us of agreeing too much in this podcast, I think they'll push Leon and possibly win this group. Ooh, I like it. Leon's just looks so good, though. I mean, they are great. It's so tricky because we're so early in the season. Mm-hmm. That you know, we, we kind of joked about this was across sports. I think we all f- fall into this trap. We're just like, oh, I don't know, it looked unbeatable, and then like a bad result. You're like, mm, something's <laughs> off here, <laughs> right? <laughs> so, well, if that keeps you know, happening, <laughs> yeah, exactly. The old pendulum is swinging pretty wildly this early, but luckily we get to just watch it, break it down, have fun, enjoy it, take it all in. And speaking of all of this, just tremendous football that's right around the corner. Let's shift gears. Group B, Tuesday, three p.m. So. Once you get your group A out of the way, get your couple of matches, got your two screens. You asked me about this a couple of weeks ago. I actually was three screening at one point. Nice. Had my TV, had my laptop, and then the little picture in picture in the laptop, watching my little two and a half year old son on the old baby monitor, you know, nice. that midday nappy. So uh, you already know what time it is. So I, 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 I uh, backed off my very firm one screen stance and I found myself uh, three screening it last week. Just taking care of business on all fronts. Dad of the year. I respect that always. Um, let's talk about Group B. I want to kind of, I want to run through this a little bit, not to, not to take anything away from these squads, but just in the interest of time, I want to, I want to do a little, a little zip through here. First match, couple of little underdog clubs. Nobody really thinks that highly of. Chelsea Football Club and Real Madrid. Oh, wait a minute. That's actually pretty important. Chelsea, they were semifinalists last year. They lost uh, 2-1 to one to Barcelona on aggregate after one of the most impressive performances of the year, pretty much from any club team, when they defeated Barcelona in the first leg 1-0, where Myra Ramirez was just an absolute bulldozer in that first match. Chelsea, they're perennial challenger for this trophy. And le- le- while we're throwing around the takes, I don't think Chelsea's window is like closing super fast. I, they're a great team. Mm. Their women's side has a great infrastructure and people who make great decisions. We won't discuss the men's side. That's not important. It's always worth a good laugh, but we'll leave that. That's <laughs> another podcast. Two other bros can do that podcast. Um, <laughs> but I, I did just want to point out. So yes, they added Lucy Bronze. Champion, great pedigree, leader, still a great player. She's 32 years old. They have Millie Bright. She's 31. Girl Wright is 30. Eve Perisse is 29. Ashley Lawrence is 29. Kadisha Buchanan is 28. Johanna Ritten Kanarud, she's 27. So I, I'll still say Ritten Kanarud still in her prime. But, you know, Millie Bright, Girl Wright, and Lucy Bronze, Perisse and Lawrence, very important players. Mm-hmm. And again, they're not over the hill. Millie Bright has kind of been battling some nagging injuries over the last like couple years. Mm-hmm. Like when you bring in Sonia Bonpastor, the only person in the world who has won the UEFA Women's Champions League as a player and a manager, mm-hmm. and twice as a captain in 11 and 12, and once as a manager in 2021, that is a signal that we are really trying to win this thing. It's the only trophy that's missing from the case. And so I just I just will say, I think there's going to be a sense of urgency with this Chelsea side. It's not like they lack that with Emma Hayes, but you can see the window. Maybe it's not closing fast. It's starting to inch close, maybe, possibly, if that's a take. I mean, it's a take. It's definitely a take. I think <laughs> I'm, I'm trying to put, get myself in, into the into the same headspace. I'm glad you mentioned Canterwood, but like when you think about the LJs, the Myra Ramirez's, you know, <laughs> Sam Kerr is probably, she's on a timetable of some sort. Mm. I do want to make a case, though, for the WSL and the, not the emergence, but like the elevation of that league and the competition there. Yeah. Obviously, we'll get to Barcelona in a little bit here, but they win a game 10 to 1. That's just not really a scoreline that you would see in the modern WSL, I think, occasionally, but I think it's probably more of like a Liga F, D1F type scoreline. Mm. So I think there might be a case to be made where, okay, these players are not, they're not post prime, right? That's they're true. Probably like on yeah. the back half of their prime. You know, these aren't, you know, mid 30s, late 30s players coming over to the MLS for the last couple of paychecks. <laughs> like, <laughs> right. These are great, great, great players. And they've got a great manager coming in, you know, who knows what it takes, who's seen everything firsthand, like literally firsthand. So I'm excited for this Chelsea side. 
they are taking on Real Madrid, another one of the teams that, I don't know, I learned something about, about myself recently that uh, apparently I have a soft spot for Las Blancas here. Just one goal allowed, four matches in Liga F, no draws, no losses, four wins. Tied for first on points, uh, some goal differential moving and shaking up at the top of the league there. I, I just really like the, the additions that they made. And I think a great encapsulator of those additions was Alba Redondo's punctuator to give uh, Real Madrid their fifth goal in their tie against Sporting CP that was just an absolute rocket. And also a little bit of a, I'm here right now. Like, yeah, I'm in the mix. Like, there better be a game plan for me. There better be minutes for me. I'm a professional goal scorer. Get me the ball. Get me chances. And you already know I'm going to deliver. Like, that goal kind of had that that kind of vibe to it. Yeah, professional goal scorer is the way to describe Redondo. I mean, you know, in the past three years for Levante, she has 30, 50, damn near 60 goals somewhere in that ballpark. Well, you know, she was, she had 28 in the 22, 23 season and 18 last year. You get her in a good position where Olga Carmona is able to kind of feed her the ball. And I just want to bring up Caroline Weir. I know we've, we've talked about her a little bit. Her return, she had 19 goals and 12 assists in her last uh, full season Oof. in Liga F. Uh, that was the 22, 23 season. She already has two goals and one assist this year. She looks like she's poised to be mostly back. She's in her age 29 season. She's coming off that ruptured ACL in September of 2023. Mm-hmm. I, I'm with you. I, I like Real Madrid's additions. I don't mean to undersell Chelsea. And I'm glad you brought up Sam Kerr too. I think we will see her. I mean, she tore her ACL like in November. So she's probably on some kind of timetable. She might, you know, maybe she might appear at the end of this group stage or she might be ready for the knockout. So that'll be interesting yeah. to see. Girl writing has looked great for Chelsea. I just want to kind of circle back. And you mentioned the big wins. I think you're right that it probably is more rare in the WSL. I don't think they're blowing through teams the way Barcelona was, especially last year. But Chelsea did defeat Crystal Palace 7-0 on Friday. Aggie Beaver-Jones got a goal. Lucy Bronze got in the mix. LJ was there. Girl Wrighton scored a brace. And then Kat Macario scored one late. I think you're the way you kind of talked about this has me thinking. I don't know if the window's closing. I, I don't know how to describe it though. It's just like you got to get one if you're Chelsea. Mm-hmm. Like you just have to be looking at it like, man, we are so close. We had Emma Hayes. We thought we were going to get it done. You don't take a step back at all by poaching Sonia Bonpastor from Lyon. No. Like it's got to happen. In, in one of these next few years, or then the demons start to crawl in and people start thinking, will it ever happen? I think it really comes down to the mentality of the players in the locker room Mm. and how they feel about Barcelona last season. We kind of talked circles around that match. Obviously, they they go to Barcelona, take that first one, one 1-0. That match single-handedly puts Aaron Cuthbert into the ITC Hall of Fame. So Mm -hmm. congrats on that. Myra Ramirez obviously was the story of that match as well. Doesn't appear in the second fixture at Chelsea. Yep. And Barcelona gets two. They advance. And I think it's fair to say Chelsea looked more dangerous, more threatening than Leon did in the final. And obviously, you're, you're without Ramirez in the second matchup, and then you're out without Sam Kerr, right. who's maybe the first or second or third best player in the world um, at full health. So if you're Chelsea, it's kind of like, how do you feel about that? Do you feel like you kind of overachieved getting to the semifinal, pushing Barcelona? Or do you feel like, fuck, we we let that one get away in MAA's last yeah. season? I would probably feel like it's more like the latter. Yeah, because they bullied that first match against Barcelona. Like, they were really on the level. Oh yeah, and then there was also the Khadija Buchanan red card against Barcelona that fucked up the whole right. match. So there's a lot of what ifs that you could tie to that. Now it's funny because these two teams, Chelsea and Real Madrid, they were matched up last season in the same group stage. And you talked about revenge tour with Wolfsburg. I think this is another revenge tour team potentially Real Madrid looking at hey we 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 <laughs> we put up an offer last group stage match didn't win a single match. I think they scraped out a draw or two over the six. I do not think that's going to happen again this season. I think they're going to really push teams. They're just playing every kind of minute, like it's stoppage time play, you know, and they're down a goal. Like, it, like the intensity definitely, definitely ratcheted up. I don't, I know that they're going to show up to these group stage matches and not let the first 10, 15 minutes, 20 minutes go by feeling like they're working themselves into the game. I feel like we're going to see Real Madrid like really gunning early. I'm super excited to see this matchup. What a tasty <laughs> pair of teams going at each other. Chelsea should have the advantage. They're at home. But, well, this one, they opened the season last year, I think. The same two teams. They sure did. It was a 2-2 draw. So, yeah, there you go. 2-2 draw. Madrid's going to be coming in feeling like we can get a result out of this match. I do want to skip ahead, though. One more matchup. 
This is a fun one. Celtic, FC Twente, Tuesday, 3 p.m. The other Group B matchup. This one going down in Glasgow. What do we need to know about this one? Yes. So the hoops, as they are nicknamed because of their circular crest already uh, endearing themselves to us uh, for our love of basketball. Uh, the hoops are six wins, one draw, zero losses right now in the Scottish Women's Premier League. Uh, they're led in goals by 24-year-old Irish attacking midfielder Saoirse Noonan. Uh, she has six goals already on the young season. Noonan also added a hat trick in the first match of qualifiers. Her fellow midfielder, Maria McEnany, a 20-year-old Scotty, uh, she's second on the team with four goals in five matches so far that she's played in the league. Mm. They are paired with 25-year-old Scottish midfielder Shannon McGregor, who they signed this summer. She's added two goals during qualifiers. I am really excited to see them line up against Twente and just get into an old-fashioned wrestling match of a That's football good. game. Try to play physical. Try to control the ball in the midfield. I just think that this has the potential to be like two teams that we, frankly, just don't know a ton about. It's hard to watch the Scottish Women's Premier League in America. It's hard to watch full matches of Eredivisie Vrown in the Netherlands. So I want to see these two teams line up. I'm going to tune in on the zone because they actually do a good job of showing all these matches to us. And I want to see all 90 minutes of this so I can start making some real opinions about these teams. I love it. Shout out to the zone. Hell yeah. Getting excited to have them back in the mix. And yeah, it is tough finding some info (laughs) like i had to search far and wide to find out what celtic did this morning against montrose ladies in the second round of the swpl cup turns out gave him a smack in seven nil Mm -hmm. uh in the second round of that competition fc 20 this is a team veteran team team with a lot of poise team with a lot of toughness uh a team that won the Eddie Divisi Brown last season, you know, they've got that championship DNA. That's a tough league. We already know. They opened the season this morning with a 3-1 win over Fortuna Sittard. So they're kind of back to their winning ways. And then obviously qualifying, they ran through the field there as well, outscoring their four, their, uh, their four opponents 20-1. to one. They're in take-no-shit mode for sure. I think defensively, it's going to come down to can Celtic kind of break through yeah. against Twente. I think it's going to be physical. Is Celtic going to be able to find anything? you know, against, against that unit. I wonder what level of confidence Twente is going to have. I mean, obviously we're always talking about professional athletes here though, but if you're Twente, you might think like, okay, let's look at the other leagues that we're talking about in our group. So obviously you have Chelsea. They're one of the favorites. Every time we walk into this competition, you have Real Madrid. They play in Liga F. We got to get fat off these wins against Celtic. Like Mm. we we have to try to boost the goal differential. We got to try to pick up three points. I don't think for a single second, Twente is going to be afraid when they go play Real Madrid. They're probably going to think we're the champions of our league. We can come in on level terms, Mm -hmm. but I think that's going to kind of play a role here. And if you're Celtic, your point is well taken. Like if you're Celtic, do you try to absorb that pressure and then try to attack Twente's defense? And if Twente's defense can hold up to that kind of play, they should probably have some success. I want to shout out you know, I talked about the midfielders for Celtic. I, I look at Twente in a similar way. Midfielder Kaylee Van Doren, she only played in five matches in Eredivisie Brown last season. Mm. She played in all four qualifiers for the Champions League here, scored four goals, including an early brace uh, in that one of those first matches against Cardiff City. They also have 23-year-old uh, versatile player. She's a winger. She's a defender. Alika Towen, please sound off in the comments. I think it's Towen. But it's spelled T-U-I-N, but it's Dutch. I was looking for good pronunciations. Having a hard time finding them on the internet. Please help your boy out. She had a good set of matches versus Osiek. She scored in the first leg Mm -hmm. on what looked kind of like a shot slash pass, (laughs) a good old-fashioned chass. But then she scored in the second leg on on a great free kick. So... Again, like I don't want to beat a dead horse. I'm looking forward to learning more about these two teams, but that's going to come from us, obviously, watching these matches. But let us know. We know we got pals in the Netherlands, and we're we're trying to make new friends in beautiful Scotland. So please let us know who should we be looking out for. What are some kind of like historical benchmarks? You know, history of managers, history of players. Just help educate us. This is a learning podcast, like we always oh, yeah. like we always say, and we're we're always open for business. We're looking for new teams to fall in love with and root for as well. Absolutely, um, got some good news. Mm. It's going to be another two parter from your boys. Nice. We're gonna we're gonna we're gonna call it an episode here. Groups A and B in the books. Tuesday action. Cannot wait. Get us there already. We're ready. I'll just ask you, just because I do it every every show. Anything else you want to hit before we get out of here? I think that's it. We covered A and B as well as we could with the information that we have right now. I'm just looking forward to October 8th 
Let's go. Shout out to the zone one more time. Quick programming reminder. We will be back with part two very, very soon. Maybe today, maybe tomorrow, depending on when you're listening to it. I mean, part two might already be there. Who knows? Give it a little look-see, see what you can find. We're also going to be back later this week with an NWSL Match Week 23 weekend preview. Just four remaining in the regular season. Huge matchups in the NWSL. Orlando Pride, 22 straight unbeaten. They take on the Washington Spirit. Bunch of other great games to round out Match Week 23. And as mentioned, we'll be back in just a few with Part 2, Group C and D. So stick around for that. All right, I'm going to say it this time. I think we did it. So that's the show. So so come back. Uh, we're going to talk about groups C and D. Stick around. We got plenty more to talk about. We will see you guys soon. <laughs>